Order is for the stupid. Only the genius rules the chaos. This quote here suits a genius well, and the genius is none other than Elon Musk. Since the genius bought Twitter last year, he's made a series of poor decisions, and now the platform is almost unusable. If you use Twitter, the service that not so long ago was the best way to take in breaking news and find audiences for serious conversations, you may have found it substantially less useful in the past year. So, what's happening with Twitter? The once admired social media platform is now under fire. How is Elon Musk responsible for the social media platform's chaos and failure? Almost from the time the first tweet was posted in 2006, Twitter has played an important role in world events. The platform has been used to record everything from the Arab Spring to the ongoing war in Ukraine. It's also captured our public conversations for years. For years, the social media platform Twitter served as more than a cultural touchstone and a shaper of public opinion. It was also a reliable source of breaking news and critical public safety information during dangerous developing events and natural disasters. So convenient and immediate was the service that many public agencies, local governments, law enforcement, and fire departments embraced Twitter as a preferred medium for citizen outreach. If a gas main ruptured, major thoroughfares were closed or criminal violence required the public to be notified, Twitter was the easiest way to get that information out quickly. And now, let us look at the collapse. Part of what makes Twitter's potential collapse uniquely challenging is that the digital public square has been built on the servers of a private company. Twitter's ubiquity, its adoption by nearly a quarter of a billion users in the last 16 years, and its status as a de facto public archive have made it a gold mine of information. Despite having around 240 million users, Twitter is tiny in comparison to Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Google. But Twitter punches above its weight. In a way, Twitter has become a kind of aggregator of information. Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter has set a new standard for disruption. Without meaning to do so, Musk has made Twitter into a soap opera, casting himself in the lead role. The show's central premise seems to be, what insane thing will the billionaire do next? We should not be surprised at how quickly and easily Twitter fell apart. Its flaws have been clear for years. Twitter has required thousands of hardworking people to keep the site running imperfectly. In his first two weeks of ownership, Musk fired many of those people and ignored the best practices for operating internet platforms. He appears to be winging it, supported by a team of venture capitalists and Tesla engineers who are either clueless, unwilling to challenge Musk, or both. Thousands of users reported that they had major issues using the platform, including an inability to access any tweets or to post their own tweets. So basically, everything for which one might want to use Twitter. Over the past year, since the former genius assumed complete control of Twitter, he has expressed hostility toward its most loyal and active classes of users, including journalists, political and social activists, and the very businesses Twitter depends on for advertising revenue. By driving away advertisers from an already shaky and poorly run firm, Musk has lurched toward a desperate but ultimately futile move to coerce, not encourage, users to subscribe to Twitter Blue, a special tier of membership that costs $8 or six pounds a month, or 38.29 race in Brazil, the third largest market for Twitter after USA and Japan. Those 38.29 race are about half what most people in Brazil pay each month for internet access and is beyond a reasonable expense for most people there. Now that's quite an absurd move from Musk, don't you think? Imagine being the sort of person who decides that even $8 a month is worth paying for a service that just keeps getting worse. Imagine wanting to pay money to the violent and oppressive government of Saudi Arabia, one of the major investors Musk brought in on the deal. This is what Musk is demanding of Twitter users, most of whom just want to keep up with what their favorite celebrities are doing and get alerted to breaking news in their area. While promising Twitter Blue users a slightly less annoying experience and the potential to reach a larger audience than plebeian users might, Musk has degraded the service for everyone. Whether because of indignation, arrogance, ignorance, or desperation, Musk has fired over half of the staff it took to keep Twitter running and growing at its peak. Entire teams like Trust and Safety, which tried to limit threats and hate speech, have been gutted. If Musk were a clever or brilliant thinker, as some people still believe, despite all available evidence, one could assume that he has some master plan or that he's making strategic decisions about the service's scope, scale, design, and functionality. He is not. He has not. He is running Twitter into the ground like Donald Trump ran the US government, fueled by fits of indignation and paranoia. Since the day he proposed taking over, Musk has demonstrated no interest or expertise in how such a service might enhance the lives of its users or at least make money to stay afloat. He's running it on debt, debt accrued from some of the most dangerous people in the world. With the new debt Musk took on to complete the purchase of Twitter stock and take the company private, the company's annual debt repayments ballooned to about $1 billion a year. 
yet the company's operations in 2021 generated about $630 million in cash flow. And those were better times for online advertising and a better time to be a user or advertiser on Twitter. Bankruptcy is a very real possibility. Musk justified the Twitter layoffs by saying the company is losing $4 million a day. The headcount reductions will make a huge difference to the expense side of Twitter's income statement, but Musk's actions have alarmed some advertisers, which may offset the expense savings. The most affected will be the people who cared for it the most. For the people who care most about Twitter, the politicians, activists, celebrities, and journalists who practically live on the site, life without Twitter is hard to imagine, but they need to do so. Replacing or replicating Twitter would be much harder than it appears. Journalists have flocked to an open source platform called Mastodon. Mastodon's advantages include distributed governance and federation. The platform is actually a federation of individual servers, each with its own rules. The downsides of Mastodon includes a kludgy interface, lack of scalability, and privacy issues. Politicians and celebrities have been slow to embrace Mastodon, recognizing that the platform was not designed for their use case, unmediated broadcast to hundreds of millions of users. The arrival of Meta's threads also garnered a lot of users since its release. Politicians and celebrities crave a Twitter that works like the pre-Musk one, but with less hate speech, disinformation, and conspiracy theories. The challenge there is that advertising business models like Twitter depend on attention, and hate speech, disinformation, and conspiracy theories are particularly effective at generating attention and profits. A safe Twitter based on advertising would be much less profitable, and one based on subscriptions would likely be far smaller. Even if you assume Twitter is not damaged beyond repair, there is no evidence that Musk would sell at a price that would enable a safe Twitter. Starting one from scratch would be challenging for many reasons, but mainly because of the difficulty of building a mass audience for a safe product and finding the capital to finance it. People with money may reasonably conclude that the value of a safe Twitter does not justify the risk inherent in trying to create one. Twitter was never great. The company never had the staff, technology, policies, or resources it would have taken to rid the experience of harassment, hatred, and calls for violence. Social media are bad for human beings on balance and by design. It offered important information during emergencies and breaking news moments, along with the predictable misinformation that flows in those moments. Twitter was at least useful in trying to do less harm before Musk took it over. Now, it's solely the refuge of white supremacists like Tucker Carlson, exiled from even some of the least respectable edges of the public square. But Musk loves the guy, so he's the new star of Twitter, enhancing no one's quality of life and enlightening no one. How long can this Twitter last? It must be a matter of months away from total collapse. However, things seem to be in a death spiral that is more than financial. It's technical. While Musk tried his best to distract critics by blaming artificial intelligence companies for allegedly scraping Twitter, a glitch in Twitter itself meant its computers were demanding data from its servers in infinite loops. Twitter was killing itself. It seems to be a mercy killing. This leaves us with two real risks we did not imagine a few months ago. Life without Twitter, so many have come to depend on, and an endgame filled with privacy and national security risks. So much for the notion that billionaires are always brilliant and wise. Twitter may well re-establish itself as a trustworthy platform for news and commerce, or something else may take its place. But the warning signs are simply too plentiful now to rely on it when moments matter. So the outlook is not exactly rosy. We're going to lose such a lot of digital history if Twitter goes kaput without warning. Well, what do you guys think? Do drop your views in the comments section below. We'll meet again with another exciting episode, until then, bye, and do not forget to subscribe to the channel.